Hey Scrap Bosses, welcome to the first video of many in the Creative Reconnection series. I am so excited to bring this series to you guys. Uh, there's been a lot of hype about it as I've announced it in the Victoria Marie Facebook group and on YouTube. I've gotten so much positive feedback, so I really feel we're going in the right direction. We're going to be so productive in 2019 and we're going to make great scrapbook layouts and we're going to tell really great robust stories and we're going to reconnect to scrapbooking. From what I've been reading in the Victoria Marie Facebook group and here on YouTube as well as my Patreon group, that some of you have felt a little disconnected and so I hope that this series helps you. We also have some new scrapbookers who are trying to find their way. So this series is definitely for you. Now all throughout this series I want to offer you some tools to help you work through the process. Now as I mentioned in the Scrappy Chat video each month has a different theme and so here in January we're going to be focusing on reconnecting with your Scrappy style and defining your Scrappy style. What does that mean to you? First and foremost, I want you to know that there's no right or wrong way to scrapbook. However you choose to scrapbook is perfectly right for you and how you want to tell your story. And it's okay to feel proud and feel comfortable with how you scrapbook and you don't have to compare yourself to anybody else. The important thing is, is that you're documenting your stories. And for me, documenting stories is always primary and the design is always secondary. The design's fun and the product and all those great things. I'm not denying that because I'm definitely a product junkie. But I I also love those robust stories and I always tell myself if my family members are sitting here reading my layouts or looking at my layouts are they gonna care about the design probably not but as a creative I care about the design and it helps to release creative energy for me as an outlet for me which is why I love scrapbooking now for a lot of you scrapbooking has been a long part of your journey as a storyteller maybe scrapbooking in some way and for some of you scrapbooking is very new so in this series at least for this month we're gonna really sort of dig into our scrappy style for a lot of scrapbookers their style has been been influenced by other individuals in the industry. Maybe you see design teams or different uh, people who design product or whatever, and your style is informed by that, and that's okay. But what's not okay is when we think that our scrapbook style has to be what we're shown on social media or shown in magazines for the few that still exist or shown on YouTube and not give credit to the way that we scrapbook, how our style, our individual style comes out in our scrapbooking. And I really want you to own that starting now in January. So let me talk about the worksheet that I developed for you for this month. It's called Reconnect With Your Creative Style Worksheet. This is what it looks like. Down in the description box below is a Google Docs link that will link you to this uh, document. So all you have to do is click on it, it'll pop up. It's a PDF document. I recommend that you take a moment, pause this video, print it out. When you do, grab yourself a snack and a drink, come on back. We're gonna review this worksheet really quickly. Also in this video, I'm gonna go through some of my layouts. It's relative to the first question that I asked you on this worksheet, so I'm gonna to get to that in a second. Now don't feel that you have to go through this exercise right now in this video. As time permits this month, I really want you to sit back and really think about your creative style. And I think more than anything, I want you to feel empowered by how you scrapbook and don't feel like you have to compare yourself to other people, um, especially to the point that you stop scrapbooking. I want, if you stop scrapbooking because of that reason, I want you to return, come back to the fold and start working through some of these things, okay? So print that worksheet and we'll go through it. So here's what I want you to think about. Even if you don't print the worksheet, maybe you just view it on your tablet or your computer or whatnot, but let's talk about this for a second. So the first thing I want to do this month is I want you to think about how you define your scrapbook style. For me, I am an eclectic scrapbooker, so I like it all. I like mixed media layouts. I like simple layouts. I like traditional layouts. I love it all. However, when I sit down to scrapbook, there is a particular style that tends to come out a lot. So what I want you to do this month is I want you to take a moment to review your layouts. I probably wouldn't go back no further than maybe two or three years if I were you. Maybe look at what you've created over the past year. Now, if you're someone who hasn't created anything in the past year or you have very few, pull out what you have, lay it out in your space, your kitchen table, your craft room, on your living room floor, it doesn't matter, okay? And I, what I want you to do is I want you to look at your layouts and on your worksheet, jot down, you have a space here, 
jot down some reoccurring themes. That's actually the first question on this worksheet. So take a moment to review some of your completed layouts. What reoccurring designs or themes do you see? Do you use, for example, a lot of pattern paper? Do you mostly do eight and a half by 11 layouts? Do you usually only have one photo on a scrapbook page or multiple photos on a scrapbook page? And if so, how many photos do you normally put? Two, three, four? Do you like a lot of color or do you like more muted colors? Do you like a shabby chic layout or do you like something that's super simple? Go through and see what are some recurring themes because that's going to inform you greatly on your overall style for scrapbooking. Now, I'm gonna come back to my layouts here in just a second as I go through this, this after I go through this worksheet, okay? So that would be the first step in this process is to look at what you create currently. The reason why I say currently is for a lot of us who have been scrapbooking for a while, our scrapbooking style may have changed. My first scrapbook page looks nothing like the scrapbook pages that I'm creating now. And so that evolution is going to happen. Even if I go through this exercise now in 2019, maybe in 2023, now that sounds weird saying that, <laughs> 2023, that seems so far away, but it's not. But maybe in 2023, my style has changed. Who knows? But it could be at that time, there's still those recurring themes that happen in my scrapbooking that helps me define sort of the base of my scrapbooking style, okay? So we're going to start there with number one is looking at those recurring designs and themes. Number two, let's talk about creative inspiration. Think about your favorite scrapbook or whoever that may be. Think about that for a second. Who do you typically watch? Maybe it's me. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's a whole group of people. But who is your favorite scrapbooker? Think about that person for a minute. And in what ways do they inspire your creativity? There's a space on the worksheet to go ahead and fill that out. Now, the reason why I have you think about who inspires you is because when I started scrapbooking years ago, I would model my style off of people who I thought made great scrapbook pages. And what happened was, is when I was modeling them, notice I used the word model and not copy. When I model them, I start looking at the techniques they were using and the products that they were using, and I either liked it or I didn't. But I also start pulling in elements of things that I like too, while still being informed by another creative. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being inspired. So who currently inspires you and how do they inspire you creatively? What things are they doing? Do they use a lot of mixed media? Do they use a lot of stash items? Um, do they think of creative ways to use tools that you have never thought of? And what ways are they informing your creative style? And jot that down there on the worksheet. Now on page two, we're going to talk about your creative safe space. And what I mean is what are those techniques or designs or products that you just naturally fall into that are part of your safe space? So even if you're trying something new or you haven't scrapbooked for a while, your safe space is where you retreat to because it feels comfortable and there's nothing wrong with that. So for me, I always retreat to a scrapbook page that's very linear with three layered clusters and a title in journaling and typically two to three photos. That's my safe space. That's why I feel comfortable. Sometimes where I don't feel comfortable is if I'm trying out a layout and it has mixed media and I'm trying different mixed media elements, that's not my safe space. That's my space where I'm taking creative risk. It may be different for you. So I want you to take a moment to think about that. And on your worksheet, you have a spot there where you can jot down some of your thoughts. Um, with this, it's perfectly okay to be in your safe space. It's absolutely all right. It doesn't mean that you're unwilling to take risk creative risk or do something different. It's just we all have our safe spaces, whether it's creatively or in other aspects of our lives. So think about that for a second. Now with this in mind, what design techniques or products inform your creative style? So in your safe space, what are some of those techniques that you go to day in and day out as you're creating a scrapbook layout and go ahead and jot that down in the space provided. Now the next thing is once we've looked at some overall themes in our scrapbooking and we talk about, we think about our safe space and we think about who inspires us, we want to then think about expanding our horizons, right? We can reconnect and we can grow. Those things can happen. This, those can be two symbiotic things that happen at the same time. There's no problem with that. So while it's okay to, to remain in your safe space, it says here on the worksheet, it's okay to try new things. 
what scrapbooking designs, techniques, or products would you like to explore in 2019? And there's a space on the worksheet for you to list that as well. So as you're going through this month of January and you're thinking about your crafty style, maybe you haven't defined that yet. Maybe that's not quite informed. And maybe you do need to expand your horizons a little bit or maybe you learn new things if you're a new scrapbooker. What are those things that you wanna learn? Do you wanna learn how to make a double page layout? Do you wanna learn how to use mixed media? Do you wanna learn how to create a simple scrapbook page? Do you wanna learn how to print your photos smaller? Um, do you wanna learn how to um, use a particular product or device? I know for a a lot of scrapbookers um, they have electronic die cutting devices and they haven't pulled them out the box yet maybe that's something that they want to learn this year maybe that's something you want to learn this year so it's okay to expand our horizons and to try something new as we continue to reconnect with scrapbooking there's a space there on the worksheet for you to fill that out and I'll continue to come back to this worksheet to this exercise all throughout the month of January so this isn't the end-all be-all so the last part of this worksheet is define your style now after you've reviewed your current layouts, so the layouts you've made over the past year or so, and you've looked at your scrappy safe space and who inspires you and that type of thing, then you'll be ready to start sort of defining your style. Now, here's the thing. Do you need to have the answer to this in 2019? No, you may not have an answer for this for a while, or maybe you don't want to define your style. Maybe whatever you put on your scrapbook page is what you put on your scrapbook page and you're comfortable and you're fine with that. Perhaps you're new and you don't know, or maybe you've been scrapbooking for 20 plus years and you don't know, that's okay too. But sometimes it's all right to say, you know what? This is who I am as a scrapbooker. I love theme scrapbooking, or I love being an eclectic scrapbooker. That's me. Hello to all of you eclectic scrapbookers out there who like it all. I'm one of those people. Maybe you like simple scrapbook pages and, or multi-photo uh, scrapbook pages or two-page layouts, and you say, you know what? That is my style, and there's nothing wrong with that. What I want for you to do, what my wish and my hope for you is that you hone that style, that you're proud of your style, and you do that style of scrapbooking unapologetically, despite what maybe you see out on the market, maybe on design team, social media, on websites or whatnot. All of those things are there to inspire us, and that's fantastic. But we all have our own style. We all have our own creative safe space that we're comfortable with, and it's okay to feel proud of that. You don't have to compare yourself to anybody else. So the last part of that is now that you've reviewed your completed layouts, consider different scrapbooking designs, um, complete the following statement in the space provided below. And that statement is, I define my scrapbook style as... And then when you're ready, you can fill in that spot. So how do you describe it? For me, I have an eclectic style. I like it all. I like simple layouts. I like very heavy embellished layouts. I like layouts with lots of pattern. I like layouts with subdued colors. I love it all. And in fact, if I were to go back and look at all my scrapbooks, I would probably find evidence of all of those styles in my scrapbooking. But I would probably also find evidence of my creative safe space style, which is typically linear with two to three photos, with three clusters, a title in journaling, typically layered pattern paper, and that's just how I scrapbook. Um, that is my style and that's what I love, even though I do expand my horizons and I try different things and I have evidence of those things in my scrapbook layouts. Now, uh, last thing, as we leave this worksheet, and I'm going to uh, pull out some layouts here in just a second is if you're not sure how to define your scrapbooking style, whether you're new or you've been in the scrapbooking game for a long time, I want you to know that that's okay. You do not have to have an answer to that today, tomorrow, or next year. But my hope for you is that you consider these questions in this worksheet and really work through it as you're defining and reconnecting, or I should say, as you're reconnecting to your scrappy style, or maybe finding your scrappy style if you're new to scrapbooking, or you've been scrapping for a while and you're not quite sure. Start looking for consistency in your scrapbooking style that's going to help to inform your design aesthetic. But most of all, throughout this whole series, throughout this whole month, as we are reconnecting, I want you to have fun. I want you to take creative risk. And I want you to be creatively inspired to make beautiful layouts that are thoughtful, that put the story first. Um, play and explore and try new things. The only way that you're going to be able to move forward, to move the needle, to reconnect, to take risks, to expand your horizons, to define your scrappy style, is if you play and explore. So you can buy all the product that you want to, you can organize all the product that you want to, we could put any other bear 
barrier in front of us actually sitting down and making scrapbook uh, layouts. That's how you start becoming comfortable with your crafty style and that's how you start to reconnect with scrapbooking. You gotta actually scrapbook and so that's what we're gonna be doing in the month of January and all throughout 2019. So when you get a moment, print this out, go through this uh, worksheet. I'm going to be coming back through this throughout the month of January. If you haven't already, make sure you go to the Victoria Marie Facebook group because that's where we're going to be playing throughout this whole series. Of course, if you're a Victoria Marie patron, then you're going to see bonus content with this series. So look for that to come. And of course, this video is going to be shared on the Patreon site because you guys get access to the stuff that's here on the YouTube channel. That's also on Patreon. And then you, of course, you'll get your extra bit of content. So if you're interested in that extra bit of content, consider becoming Victoria Marie patron. The link is posted down below. Alrighty, so we're going to continue to work through this exercise. So this is not something you have to do just to see this video posted on Saturday. So this is not something that you have to do over the, the weekend, clearly, but take your time and really think about these questions and really start um, getting an understanding of how you scrapbook and, and how you want to reconnect to that. All right, so we will continue to come back to this throughout the month of January. So, so what I want to do next is I want to show you some of my own scrapbook layouts um, where I feel there are some consistent reoccurring themes in these layouts over the past year or two, um, some of which you may recognize if you've been watching me for a very long time. So I'm going to kind of walk through that process and then we're going to start creating. So in the next video or actually throughout the month of January, since we're focused on scrapbooking style, I'm going to create layouts that sort of represent different types of scrapbooking. Since I'm an eclectic scrapbook, or I feel very comfortable in doing that because I do have some simple layouts and some heavily embellished layouts and mixed media layouts and artsy layouts and whatever, I have them all. And so we're gonna kind of explore that as we are reconnecting with our scrappy style. And at the end of it, um, I will more than likely tell you that I feel very comfortable in my scrappy safe space and we'll probably have some of those same reoccurring themes as I show you here in a second. Um, but I think it's good to be informed of the different types or different styles of scrapbooking out there uh, to help you and inspire you as you are reconnecting, um, feeling really good about how you scrapbook, or maybe even taking some creative risk and trying some new things, uh, particularly if you are new to scrapbooking. So without further ado, uh, let's look at some of my scrapbooks. So I have been scrapbooking a little bit over, oh goodness, maybe 15 years now, and my scrappy style has evolved over that time. There are certain consistencies in my scrapbooking that I've noticed over the past maybe three or four years, or maybe even more. The first thing is, is that I really like using pattern paper. So this is a really good example of a layout that I created and where I'm using two different, actually I'm using three different pattern papers in this layout. I also have three areas, well main areas of layered embellishments. So I do like to do a lot of layering with stickers and other elements. I like big titles and I also like a lot of journaling. The lines on my layout tend to be very linear. So I tend to be one of those scrapbookers where I love straight lines, whether it's horizontal or vertical. And here I have horizontal lines with the band of pattern paper. I have a vertical line with my two photos um, here in the center. Another thing that I notice about my scrapbook pages is that I tend to use a lot of four by six photos, although because there's so many apps out there now on the market, sometimes I like to resize my photos using my pick frame app and using smaller photos because I get a lot of them on a page. Now I'm typically a one page scrapbooker. I used to do a lot of two pages and I kind of got away from that and I'm not quite sure why. Um, I think maybe just for time's sake, it does take a little bit longer to make a two page than it does a one page even though I, I do like two page layouts but I tend to default my scrappy safe space tends to be one page layouts here's an example of a layout that I did for the hip kit design team again notice the linear lines here the vertical lines um, I do like my photos centered sometimes in my layouts here are those three embellishment clusters the large title with the journaling Here's another really fun layout. This is one of my favorites. I think I made this for Hip Kit Club as well. Um, this one is a lot less linear, although the photo and the interest is in the middle of the layout, much like this layout here where the focus is in the middle. Again, you can see the layered clusters and the journaling. And a lot of my layouts, I like to use two different font types for my titles. 
Here's one is an example again of how I love to layer. And uh, this is a really good example of that actually. And so I have my layered clusters here. As you can see those clusters in and of themselves, if you look at uh, some of my layouts I've done currently, um, include a lot of different elements. So this one is just regular die cuts with chipboard. Um, I also, this one fell off. <laughs> these little guys are falling off. I also have these little butterflies that were a part of that cluster as well. So I like to use different textural elements. Every now and then I like using a cut file and if I use a cut file then I'll tend to back that with pattern paper. Um, again another one of these layouts where the photo is centered. Also notice with these layouts um, typically one photo layouts. Here's one, here's one. Um, I think I did three photos, no two photos here. So I tend not to use a ton of photos, particularly if I don't have a lot of photos of a particular event. This is a good example where the photo told the story. There was no other photo for this particular story, but the photo is centered. I've got the layering and the clustering going on. And again, going through all of my scrapbooks, over, well, not all of them, but some of the scrapbook pages that I've been uh, creating lately, this is the design I tend to go through. Um, here is another one again with those linear lines that are much like, let me pull this other one. It's very similar, very similar to this layout, right? So again, I've got the vertical lines here, got the photos in the middle, not surprised with these layered uh, clusters. Again, have some die cuts and some um, other things going on in these layered clusters. Got my title and have a lot of journaling. Here's another page with some, again, linear lines, only this time horizontal, um, using my one photo, four by six typically, although I did uh, trim these photos down to fit in the frames. My layered clusters there, my title. I don't have any journaling on this one. This is another example of a style of layout that I tend to uh, go to a lot. So again, I kind of like my photos in an either horizontal or vertical fashion, typically one right after another, nice and lined up. Um, again, all that beautiful clustering there. I have my title and my journaling. With this one, I changed the orientation of my photos, typically not so much in the dead center of my layout, but I brought it down to the bottom, or sometimes I'll bring it up to the top. There is another layout in here. Let me see if I can find it real quickly. Um, here's one again with that horizontal band of photos going in the middle. Then I have another one in here. Where's it at? Here it is. A horizontal band of photos here at the top. So there's a lot of my layouts where either that band's here at the top, the middle, or the bottom, but that is something that is consistent and reoccurring in my scrapbooking, and I'm comfortable with it being that way. And it is my scrappy safe space, and I tend to default to that type of design. Here's another example <laughs> where I use two four by six photos, one vertical, one horizontal. Um, now here's one where I put my photos here to the side. If I'm going to do a large title or if I'm gonna do something with mixed media elements, I tend to like to make my photos smaller so that I can see the mixed media elements. The only mixed media on this, so to speak, is I use Distress Oxides for my title. Um, again, you can see those layered clusters. You can see a nice straight line with the vertical um, band of pattern paper, washi tape, and this tab going here so that element's still there. I kind of did this clustering with the photo. Um, I have the vertical element here with this banner that I cut from some pattern paper. Um, as you can tell I love using pattern paper. It's represented through all of my layouts. Lots of pattern paper whether I use it for layering or I use it for a background. So that's another element that's pretty consistent. Um, here's another one. Again, going back to sort of the straight lines in my layouts, only this time I did it in a grid fashion with these punch circles that I made. I did this at the last Victoria Marie scrapbook retreat. Here's that photo, it's kind of off-centered, but centered nonetheless. Have my title, um, didn't do a whole lot of journaling on that one, but I do have the clusters. Again, a recurring theme in my scrapbooking. Uh, one last layout, here's one. I tend to, if I'm gonna off-center photos, then they usually will be off-centered to the right-hand side. I am right-handed. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I tend to veer to the right-hand side. Um, here is, let's see, the last, one of the last layouts that I showed you, where again, I have this cluster of photos 
here to the right hand side the same here now I didn't look at this layout to inform this layout it's just naturally how I scrapbook um, have the layered clusters with the different elements in it my nice large title and my journaling so lots of reoccurring themes in my scrapbooking I would probably say that these elements or the way that I position the elements the things that I use lots of die cuts lots of pattern paper um, interesting font stickers for my titles lots of layering um, when I can if I'm gonna do a multi photo layout I typically will resize the photos notice that all of these are one page layouts this is how I scrapbook this is my design aesthetic and it has been that way for quite some time do I wish to change this no because this is my scrappy safe space am I okay to try new things absolutely and I do but majority of the time when I sit down a scrapbook this is how I scrapbook so going back to our creative reconnection worksheet our style worksheet on the first question in what ways or or what reoccurring themes do you see these are my reoccurring themes these are things that if you were to come to my house today and look at my scrapbooks this is what you will see evidence of time after time after time with pretty much majority of the layouts there are other layouts that i do pocket layouts two page layouts mixed media layouts where I veer away from my scrappy safe space, but I would define my scrappy style in this way with straight lines, with clustering, with large titles, with lots of journaling. So maybe a mix of traditional, a little bit of editorial because of the straight lines and the design. Now, I want you to think about your reoccurring themes and your scrapbook pages. Make some notes on your reconnect with your creative style worksheet and start really thinking about this throughout the month of January. Reconnecting with your creative style is a worthwhile process. And all throughout the month of January, we're going to explore and play. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to challenge yourself and hopefully you'll be inspired to really feel comfortable with appreciating how it is that you scrapbook, looking at some reoccurring themes, looking at who inspires you and maybe using some of that inspiration to model a little bit your own scrapbook aesthetic, take some risk, define your scrappy safe space and being okay in your safe space, but ultimately being able to define in some way your own scrappy style. And you know what? You may not get to that this month or next month, but take your time. Make sure you go ahead, print out this PDF worksheet, fill it out. We're going to be talking more about this and more on the Victoria Marie Facebook group. So make sure you head on over and join the group. If you are part of the Victoria Marie Patreon group, and if you haven't, go ahead and join. There's information linked down below. Um, you'll have some bonus content all throughout this series, throughout the month of January, as well throughout the year. So make sure you check that out. So what we'll do at this point is the rest of the videos that you'll see in this creative reconnection series is going to be me making some stuff i'll pop on probably do some more scrappy chats probably do some facebook lives maybe do a youtube live i'm trying to get that coordinated um so that we can continue to play and explore and really talk about reconnecting with our scrappy style so this is not the end of it we're going to continue this dialogue so make sure you head on over to the victoria marie facebook page make sure you check out the blog because i have this document it's linked down below in the description box but you can also check out this document on the Victoria Marie blog. I'll have a link there as well. Check me out on Instagram and please come back as we work our way through this fantastic series. If you have any questions or any comments, post it down below. And by the way, if you haven't already subscribed to the Victoria Marie YouTube channel, make sure that you do click that bell indicator when you do subscribe. That way you'll know each and every time I post a new video here on the Victoria Marie YouTube channel. All right, guys, stay tuned. Next video is coming up where I will be making a layout out and we're going to be exploring simple scrapbook style in that process video patrons you will get a bonus video this month where we'll talk about simple scrapbook style as well okay see you in the next video this video is made possible in part by the victoria marie scrap boss patrons if you're interested in supporting victoria marie designs as a patron make sure you check out the patreon link below for more information and to join